Hello everyone, today's video is very special because we are going to implement JWT authentication and authorization in our Spring Boot application. I will also give you a small assignment in the end which will help you to understand and enhance your JWT and Spring security knowledge. I hope you already have a basic understanding of JWT. If you are new to the topic, you can get the basic idea of JWT from my previous video. You can also access the video from top right corner of your screen. So without any further delay, let's start. In this project, we will be using a database for storing and retrieving user details. Also, this project will be uploaded to GitHub so that if you want to take a reference from it, you can do it for free. Now starting with pom.xml, we need a few dependencies for our project. These dependencies are Spring Data JPA, Spring Security, Spring Web, S2 Database, Lombok and a set of JWT dependencies. Now make sure all these dependencies are added to your pom.xml or gradle.build in case you are using gradle. Now let us see some basic configuration in your application.properties or yaml file. You can have a separate port on which your service should run. Then you need to provide complete H2 database configuration and also enable H2 console in case you want to check the details from database. We will be doing that so we have enabled the H2 console here. Then some JPA related settings that tells Hibernate to automatically create a database schema based on our entities. Also we have defined two JWT configurations where one is a secret key that is used to sign JWTs and another one is tokens expiration time which is set to around 3.6 million milliseconds which is equivalent to 1 hour. Now let us see the entity class. User class is a JPA entity that represents our user underscore details table in the database. It has fields like user ID, username and password. Each field is mapped to a column in the database. We have used Lombok annotations here which are used to automatically generate common methods like getter, setter, constructors and toString making the class concise and easy to work with. Now we have an exact replica of user entity as user DTO because all the data sharing between different layers and also exposing the details from controller will be done using DTO. We will never expose an entity in the controller. This class is similar to our user entity. It doesn't have JPA annotations so it won't interact directly with the database. We also have two more DTOs, one for authentication request and other one is for authentication response. In authentication request, we need only two fields, username and password, which will be provided by the client. And in authentication response, after successful authentication, we will send the complete JWT string. We need a way to interact with the database. So for that, we have a repository interface. This interface extends JPA repository, giving us basic CRUD operations. We also have a method to find a user by their username. If you have not yet implemented till this point, please pause the video or watch it again because we will be using all these components in the security implementation. So now let's start with JWT security implementation. First a utility class JWT util which is responsible for token generation and validation. It is annotated with at the rate component so it is a managed bean. The value of secret and lifespan of token are injected from the properties file using at the rate value annotation. The first method is generate token. It is used to generate a token for a user. It takes a user detail object as an input which contains user specific information like username. It initializes an empty claims map which can be used to store additional data to be included in the token as payload. It calls another method to create token by passing these claims and the username. The create token method builds a JWT using provided claims and username. The method adds the claim to the token, sets the user as subject and assign the current time as issuing time. It also sets an expiration date by adding a predefined lifespan. The token is signed with HS256 algorithm using the secret key that we have defined. And finally, the method compacts all these elements into a single JWT string and returns it. So this is how the token generation process works. Very simple, right? 
Now before we understand the token validation, let us first understand a few helper method that it relies on. The first method is extract all claims. This method parses the token using secret key to validate and decode it. It returns the body of the token which contains all the claim. Now before we continue, please make sure that you understand the concepts of claim. If you do not, please go back and watch my previous video where I have completely explained what are claims and how do they work. Now let us continue. Then we have extract claim method. This is a generic method that extract a specific claim from a token. It first calls extract all claims to get all the claims and then applies a claim resolver function to retrieve a specific claim. Now it is a generic method which will be used by multiple other methods. Now next method is extract username from token. This method uses extract claim method to specifically extract the subject which is the username from the token. We also have extract expiration method which is similar to extract username from token. This method uses extract claim but focuses on extracting the expiration date of the token. Now using the return value of expiration we need to compare it with the current date. If the expiration date is before the current date, the token is considered expired. The final method is validate token. So this is the main method that validates the JWT. It first fetches the username from the token, then it checks for two things. Whether the extracted username matches with the username in user detail object and whether the token is not expired. The method returns true if both the conditions are met, indicating that token is valid. Otherwise, it returns false. Now with this, we are done with the complete token generation and validation logic. Now we need a couple of filters which will intercept the authentication and authorization requests. Let us first talk about JWT authentication filter. This filter processes login requests. It checks the username and password and if they are correct, it generates a JWT token. This class extends username password authentication filter and overrides a couple of methods also. First one is attempt authentication. This will intercept the login request and using authentication manager, it will try to authenticate the user. The second overridden method is successful authentication. This will be called when user authentication is successful and it will use JWT util to generate the token. Another filter is JWT authorization filter. This filter runs on every request except the login endpoint. It checks if JWT token is present and valid before allowing access to the protected resources. This class extends basic authentication filter and overrides the do filter internal method. In that, it fetches the authorization header details from the request. Then using get authentication method, it will validate the token which is received in the header. If valid, then an authentication object is returned, which is then set to the security context holder, allowing Spring to recognize the user as authenticated user for subsequent requests. Now with this, we are done with everything we need from the JWT side. Now let us start with the standard security configuration. The first configuration that we have defined is a bean of user detail service. In this, we are checking in the database by username. If user does not exist, then we are throwing an exception that username not found. Else we are returning an instance of user with all the details. In simple terms, this class configures how our application fetches user details from the database during the authentication process. It ensures that when a user attempts to log in, their details are correctly retrieved and handled by Spring Security. Now we are left with three things in Spring Security configuration a password encoder, authentication manager, and security filter chain. These three beans are defined in application security config class. For password encoding, here we are using bcrypt password encoder to securely hash and verify the passwords and the authentication manager that we are getting it from authentication configuration. Authentication manager in Spring Security is responsible for processing the authentication requests. By exposing the authentication manager as a bean, the other components in our application can use it to authenticate users like we have used it in JWT authentication filter to authenticate the user. Now to the last bean which is security filter chain. We have already discussed how it works in one of our previous sessions in detail. This configuration method sets up the security rules for our application. 
defining which URLs are public and which URLs require user to be logged in. It ensures that only authenticated user can access the protected resources. Here, API Auth and H2 Console URLs are permitted for all the users, meaning no authentication is required to access these endpoints. Any request other than these must be authenticated. This ensures that only certain parts of our application are publicly accessible while others require the user to be logged in. Now adding both the JWT authentication and authorization filters in our security filter chain that will take care of authentication and authorization of all requests to access the protected resources. In headers, I have allowed the frames from the same origin. This will be required if we want to access S2 database tables because it uses multiple frames. Okay, so this was too much, right? But bear with me as the security part is done here. Now we just need to have user registration and login part which will be fairly simple. I hope you have understood and implemented the logic till this point. If not, please do it before continuing. Now let us start looking at the registration part first. This is our user controller with one endpoint configured. This controller method will handle post request to slash register. It will check if the username is already taken and if not, save the user detail in the database by passing user DTO to the user service method for saving user details. This this is our user service class with two methods. One is to find the user by name which was used in controller earlier to identify if the username already exists or not. The second one is to save the user details. Now before saving we need to encode the password and we already have a bean of bcrypt password encoder in the context. So using that bean we encoded the password before saving it to the database. On success we return the DTO with automatically generated user ID in the database as well. Now with this we are done with the user registration part as well. Now let's move to the login implementation. In this controller, we have one method to handle login requests. It takes an authentication request object from the request body, which contains username and password provided by the user. The authentication manager dot authenticate method checks the credentials against the stored user data. If the credentials are incorrect, it throws a bad credential exception which is caught and rethrown after logging the message incorrect username or password. If authentication is successful, we get a JWT which is a token in string form. This token will be returned back to the client which they can use to access restricted resources for subsequent requests until the token expires. Now we are all set with JWT authentication and authorization in our application including user registration and login implementation also. Now before we test it, let us just summarize quickly what all we have done. First we included Spring Data JPA, Spring Security, Spring Web, S2 Data database, Lombok and JWT related dependencies in our pom.xml. Then we set up application dot properties for H2 database, Hibernate and JWT. After that, we created user entity and corresponding DTOs for handling data transfer. We have also added a repository interface for database operations related to user entity. Then we built a JWT util class for token generation and validation that also has many helper methods for extracting claims, username and expiration date. After that, we created JWT authentication filter for handling login requests and generating JWT tokens and JWT authorization filter for validating the token in subsequent requests. Then we have defined user detail service, password encoder, authentication manager and security filter chain beans to secure endpoints. Also configured public and protected routes. In the end we have implemented user registration and login mechanism as well. Now suppose this is our resource which we want to secure using JWT. Users should only be able to access this using a valid token. Now let me open my REST client where we can test the complete flow. The complete flow will be of multiple requests. In this, first the user will be registered, then it will send a login request to the server and on successful authentication it will receive a token which is JWT and in the end using that JWT we will try to access the secure resource. Let me first connect to S2 database console as well and show you the user detail table. Here you can see currently there is no data available in the user details table. So let us use our register API and create one user. This register request will be a post request. 
and in the body we are providing username and password for providing a request body click on the body tab and select raw input from the mime type you can select json and in the empty area you can provide username and password details in a json form after providing the detail just click on send the request because we have added auth urls in the public list while configuring the security filter chain this url will be accessible without authentication here in the response, we can see 200 OK is received and a new user is also created. Now let us just verify this detail in our database table also. Here we can see a bcrypt encoded password for lazy programmer user is present now. Now moving to the next stage which is to login and obtain the JWT. Login will also be a post request and in the body we need to provide authentication request which is username and password in JSON form similar to our registration request. For once, let us just try to provide a wrong password and see the response. Here we can see we are getting a bad credentials as response. Now let us provide the correct password and obtain the token. Here you can see we have received the token after successful authentication. Now let us try to access the secure resource without any token first. Here we are getting HTTP 403 forbidden. Now how to use token that we have generated. For that first click on the authorization tab then select the type of authorization as bearer and on the right you will get a text box to input the bearer token which we have just received from the login request. Here you can see with the generator token we can access the secure resource from our server. So similar to this for all the other resources also the HTTP request will contain this bearer token which will be intercepted and validated before the user can access the actual resource. So in this way the user credentials will not be required every time once a user has a valid non-expired token. Now as promised in the beginning a small assignment for you. If you have noticed we haven't included any roles for the users in this implementation. Now your task is to add roles functionality to this application. Create separate endpoints for different roles and configure Spring security accordingly. You can fork my repository from github and share your solution in your forked repositories or use any other method that works for you. Now I just want to reiterate this one line once again. If you do not practice and do a hands on on these things you will never get it. You can watch as many videos of as many youtubers or any paid courses as you want. If you do not implement on your own and do the hands on you will not get it. So please I request you to complete this assignment and share the results with me. And if you face any issue, don't worry, I will cover this assignment in our next video as well. So that's all for JWT implementation in our Spring Boot application. It was a long session, but I hope learning JWT is worth the time. If this video was helpful and you learned something new, please give this video a thumbs up. Share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Also press the bell icon so that you will get a notification when I upload the assignment solution or any other new video. Your feedback is very important to me. Please comment whatever you like in the video or on anything which I need to improve on. Now once again thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Till then happy coding.